In the past, whenever we try to differentiate something, I've always asked you to minus the index by 1. So for example, if you have y equals x to the power of 4, if you differentiate this, dy by dx uh, equals 4x, and then I've always asked you to minus this by 1, that will give you uh, 4x to the power of 3. Um, but why why always minus 1? I, I never really explained to you why minus 1. I've always said, take my word for it for, for the time being, that you always minus 1. And I will explain to you why at a, at a later stage. Well, now is the later stage. Okay, So so you always minus 1, but, but why always minus 1? Why not minus 3? Or why not minus 7? But why always minus 1? So in this video, I will try and ex attempt to explain to you why minus 1. Okay, so so when when we first started out with calculus, I I would give you something like this, and then I would sketch um sketch the the graph for you, and then and then set up this system here where where you get h to tens towards zero. So you should be familiar with this by now. So um so that would take us to this stage here, and then and then we would then m multiply this out. When you multiply this out, that would then give you uh that would then give you this here. Okay. And then, and then these two would kill off each other, and then, uh, and then, and then, blah blah blah. Uh, the H here, you should be familiar with this by now. Uh, oops. Uh, and then, and then, uh, and then, finally, dy by dx yeah, equals two x. So when, so when you, um, when, when given y equals x, uh, x squared here, if you differentiate it, for some reason we notice that this goes down here, and then the power always gets minus by one. So this is in effect two uh, x to the power of one. And we, we noticed the same thing when we tried it with x to the power of 3. So we would then, uh, given this here, uh, quickly um, sketch a graph, set up this system here, and get this, uh, this h here to tens towards 0. So, so that would lead us to this here. Okay? And, and, then, and then it was really time consuming multiplying this bit out. This, you see, this here is the hard part here. Um, you, you, we, we then had to multiply this out. Then this, then, then later on, we've got to do this times this, this times this, this times this, and then this times this, and this times this, and this times this. It's very time consuming when you have this. Okay. Well, anyway, we would follow through the whole process. Um, blah blah blah. These two would cancel out, and uh, blah 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 here. Um. Uh, and then and and so on here. You would simplify it, but but the hard part here is really this bit here, um, this bit here, okay. And uh, and then that that then becomes this. You see, you see, when when it comes to multiplying out to the power of blah blah. Imagine if if you had to do to the power of seven, that that would be a lot of work. So we we would need to use what's called the binomial theorem. Hang on. We would need to know uh, the binomial theorem. That that would then that would then help us. Um, that would then that would then speed up the process. So, for example, if if we had to work out um, when given y equals x to the power of seven, dy by dx equals this. Now the hard part is in this bit here, trying to power it to the seven. This is a lot of work. You could sit there and do it by hand, um, multiply the bracket out each time. But it, it, it is a lot of work, so we, we would use um, the binomial theorem just to do this bit for us. So later on, we can do, let's say, um, x plus h to the power of, let's say, 127, if we wanted to, because the binomial theorem allows us to to do this easily. Okay, so w with the binomial theorem, which I will explain more in the video in, in the next video, well. Um, with the binomial theorem, you would set up what's called the um, what's called Pascal's triangle. So you would start off with uh, with a thing in the middle here, and then uh, and then you have one here, one here, and then that splits it up, um, uh, and then this here splits up like this, um, the, uh, and then and then this here becomes a one. Uh, well, if you add up these two, it's then a two, and then this here is just a one. Um, and then you you split it up again like this, and then if if you look at this here, this plus this here will give you a three, and then if you look at the gap in the middle, this plus this here will be a three, and so on. Uh, and then uh, well, split it up here, one here, and split this up one here, and then uh, uh, well, I hope you can see the the pattern here. This plus this here would be four, and then 
this plus this here will be a 6 and then and this plus this here will be a, uh, a 4 and so on. You see, the, when you follow this pattern here, um, these numbers here are actually the coefficients of, um, uh, of well, well, when, when you try and, if, if you follow through this here, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If you, if you look at this Pascal's triangle here, if you look at uh, the case of x squared here, let's, let's say, let's say you want to do a plus b squared. Okay, um, this then becomes, well, looking at this here, x squared, looking at this here, all, I, all you need to, to do is identify the coefficient. So this then would become 1a squared, okay, and then, and then plus 2, because of this coefficient here, 2, and then the combination of a and b. So 2ab, and then the next one would be 1 plus 1, and then the b on its own. So this will be b squared. Okay, doesn't matter if you don't fully understand this. Um, in the next video, we we'll elaborate more on it. So, if, if you want to do, let's say, uh, uh, let's say um, a plus b to the power of three here. You see, if this is to the power of three. These are your coefficients here. Okay, so so to do this here, I would just I would just jump to this. Um, looking at looking at uh, hang on, looking at this here, the first coefficient would be one. So that would be one. Uh, a to the power of three, okay, and then and then the next coefficient would be three, so it's plus uh, three, and then you, you see the highest uh, the the highest power is um, a to the power of three, so you minus a a to the power of three by one. So well, it doesn't matter if you don't understand this, just just watch it through, uh, and then here it will be uh, the next coefficient would be three, so it'd be uh, three, and then again minus this by one, and then push this up by one. Uh, so that would be a b squared. And then looking at this here, this would be plus one uh, one b to the power of three. Okay, so so as you move along, the the a decreases by one each time, and then the b increases by one. So it's, it's in a way symmetrical here. It doesn't matter if you don't fully understand this. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we wanted to know. Um, x uh x to the power of seven. So if 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 you want to do x to the power of seven, let's uh follow follow this Pascal's triangle here to um to x to the power of seven. You see x to the power of seven. So so if you want to if you want to work out um uh let's say y equals x to the power of seven. So uh dy by dx here would be this. But the hard part is in this bit here. So you would then use Pascal's triangle here. If you look at if you look at x to the power of seven here, the first coefficient would be one. So, so, uh, so looking at this here, hang on, the first coefficient is one. So this here, the first coefficient is really one. Okay. Uh, and then, and then the next coefficient is seven. Now again, it doesn't matter if you don't fully understand this, just get the rough idea behind it. So then the next coefficient is seven. So if you look at this, it's seven here. And then, and then x to the power of six. Um, uh, so, so, so this is your coefficient of seven here. Hang on. So this, this seven here matches up with this coefficient here. This one here matches up with, with this, well, that's in effect a one here. Twenty-one here matches up with this twenty-one here. Well, just, just bear in mind that all, 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 um, all it's doing is that it allows us to power it easily. You could do it by hand, but it takes ages. So yeah, so this here is your your x um, well, uh, and then and then twenty one here, uh, twenty one here is um, is is this bit here, okay, and then the seven here is this here, okay, and then and then the one here would be h to the power of uh, of seven here, and don't forget this this here is just us taking away x to the power of seven here, okay, but but my my point is that. Um, doing doing this by hand here takes a very long time, so so we we would use a binomial theorem, and then that allows us to jump from here straight to here. Okay, so when when you when you multiply this out here, when you multiply this out, it will give you this here. It it just speeds up the the uh, the process. But I'll always elaborate more on the binomial theorem in the next video, and then and then blah blah blah. So I'll elaborate more on it in the next video. Okay?